to pause and kind of since just to set us up for Holy Week, look at the different resurrection stories, empty tomb stories from the four Gospels. We might get to some of the other stories as far as the appearance stories, but that's probably going to be too much for us, but we'll see. We'll see how far we get. Um, so I've pulled up my synopsis of the four Gospels, which puts them right next to each other. And so we're going to have some fun comparing them and wrestling with the similarities and the differences. So with that, let us pray. Gracious God, let this time be fruitful and helpful for our faith. And, and indeed, may looking at these stories of the empty tomb move us to go with those women and tell the good news. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so all four Gospels have empty tomb narratives. You could, should know that critical scholars, that's those scholars that say they might believe in the um, inspiration of these Gospels by the Holy Spirit, but they, um, they want to get behind, you know, the four Gospels and, and ponder, you know, the historicity of what they're saying. And some of the historical critical scholars, some, I, that's important, that's just some, would make the point that probably the, the empty tomb narratives are later. Um, and some would even say they're probably not historical. Uh, but that's something you can decide. I think they are, but that's something you get to, to wrestle with as you read through them. But I just say that just so you know, um, and we're going to be looking at the similarities and the differences and with these, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Obviously, we're going to have to, they're pretty squeezed in tight here. In my computer, I've got a more of a rectangle screen and the square, they get even more condensed. Let me just try something. You tell me, can you see it if I move? Can you see that? Can you see that okay back there? Okay. That'll help if we can go a little smaller. Let's start with Mark, since we most believe that Mark was probably um, the earliest of our four Gospels, Matthew and Luke having Mark in front of them when they wrote. That's the... The uh, theory that's probably gained most um, acceptance. So, Mark 16, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had arisen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will ro roll the stone away for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now I won't mess up Jonathan's Easter sermon, because this is the text for Easter. <laughs> and I know just from looking at our publicity, he's going with the, and they ran away terrified. This is the end right here. Get rid of and, this, that and and what follows. This is the end of the most ancient manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark. What follows we find in later manuscripts, 5th, 6th century, but the earliest ones, 
third, the papyri in third and fourth century, and the codexes, I believe. I don't think it's in Codex Sinaiticus, I don't remember. But um, the earliest manuscripts, that's the end. And then later manuscripts, we start to see this ending, which I'll read to you. And all that had been commanded then, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterwards, Jesus himself sent out through them from the east to the west, to west, the sacred and perishable proclamation of eternal salvation. So, um, now the God, I think that there's more to that ending, but as far as the initial empty tomb, there is this little bit of addition to the Gospel of Mark. Can you understand why people, why this got added eventually? It's like, that's a strange place to end your Gospel. They, 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 yes. They went away afraid and said nothing to anyone. So, so that's the way Mark ends. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go into that because Jonathan is gonna talk about it. He's, no, we can talk about it a little bit. But I, let's go back up now. Let's go back up. You've seen. You've heard Mark. As far as some things to note in the Gospel of Mark, the women have. They're going to the tomb. Why? Why were they going to do that? Didn't have time to be for a proper burial. And Mark tells us about this person who said, you know, I've got this new tomb, I'm going to take care. And, and actually, archaeologically, just recently, we found in a tomb um, in Jerusalem, not we like I went did it or something, but archaeologists have found an actual heel bone with a, a spike in it. So why is that important? Well, most people who were crucified were tossed, just like the movie Risen depicted, into a, a mass grave. But some people were given a burial. Maybe they, that a family thing or whatever. And so Joseph of Arimathea is said to have gotten permission to give Jesus a proper Jewish burial. And so the fact that we found in a, you know, in, in a grave site, not in a mass grave site, but in a grave site, a heel bone with the, um, the nail in it, it kind of gives confirmation that this could have happened. Jesus could have been given a, a proper burial. Some people have discounted the resurrection because they've said, or the empty tomb. You could still believe in the resurrection, but the empty tomb narratives saying that Hey, if he was crucified, he'd have been put in a mass grave. He'd have never. Well, some people have discounted that the gospel story, but here we found a heel bone with the nail in it that was properly buried. So that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, the Smithsonian Magazine just recently has a bunch of new archaeology stuff, and they I've read about it, this heel but if, bone. But if that was Christ, yes. then the stories of his reappearance and showing Thomas his nails in his side. I mean, nails on his hands and his, you That's assume correct. that it would be in his feet, too. That's correct. And if that was Jesus' actual heel bone, we're all in trouble. Yes. <laughs> because, okay, you know, yeah, no, I, let me, yeah, thank you for clarifying, Bob. I'm not saying that's Jesus' heel bone. I'm saying that the fact that, that they found one shows that it's certainly plausible that Jesus could have been given a proper burial, that this would happen. I don't think any archaeologists are thinking that you are wondering about that, but, but that is, that's a great point, so thank you for that. So Jesus, they didn't have time to anoint his body properly, so they put him in the tomb, it's the Sabbath, and you're not supposed to do that kind of work on the Sabbath, and so they're going to come back later. How are we going to get the big stone rolled away? Um, you know, the garden tomb that's in Israel, those of you who want to go with us next year, we, we have lots of spaces open. I encourage you to, to think about that. Um, it actually was a big, almost wheel um, that they would roll away and then they would roll back. So, because a tomb would be used for multiple, um, buried, like a cave, um, would be used for multiple burials. They would leave the body there for a year or so till everything had gone to bone. And then they would take those bones and put them in an ossuary, a bone box. That was the practice in Jesus' day. So this makes total sense with first century burial practice. 
Um, not necessarily maybe for the average person, but again, Joseph of Arimathea was a wealthy person. So we've got how who, who going? Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. And they are bringing spices. They go, and what do we find here? Um, a man uh, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. They're alarmed. Don't be alarmed. And then the great words from the angel, he's been raised. It's interesting that here, who was crucified? Who is this guy that we're talking about? The one who was crucified. I think that's an important emphasis in Mark. Okay, let's read Matthew. Just and we'll get the we'll get these all on board, and then we'll see what you observe as differences or similarities. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the, see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Um, he is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. So what are the similarities and differences between Mark and Matthew that you notice already? So I, I don't know if we need mics maybe. Uh, or Earthquake. <laughs> earthquake. Matthew has an earthquake. Mark doesn't tell us about the earthquake. Mark wasn't a seismologist. <laughs> Two women... Just to go see. Just to go see. So so they go for a different, they go to see the tomb. They don't necessarily go to anoint his body. It's interesting. Yeah, Ken? Uh, Mark mentions Peter separately. Yes. Like Peter's grieving and away from the rest of the disciples. Right, right. So Peter, let's see, Peter comes in here where? Down at the end, right? where he talks about the disciples, yeah. disciples and Peter. Go up again. So, up here a little more? No? No, really. Oh, it's in Mark. I see. Yes, and so in the, in the, the, the additional ending to Mark, Peter, um, they told briefly those around Peter. So, Peter gets highlighted in this, in this addition. And it's up above here? Right there. Ah, go and tell us, and Peter. So Peter is featured in Mark. That's interesting, because Matthew is really celebrates Peter. Um, you know, remember in, when, when uh, he says, who do you say that I am? In Matthew, Jesus goes on to say, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, Peter, but upon you I will found my church. That's from the Gospel of Matthew. So Peter's really highlighted. Um, in Mark, um, he just says, Peter says, you are the Christ. And then right after that, Peter says, no, you'll not suffer, Jesus. And he says, get behind me, Satan. So that's, uh, you know, interesting. All right. Thank you, Ken. Excellent catch there. Peter is highlighted in the disciples of Mark. What else? Um, sorry. Get, get the mic so people can hear you. Yeah. Did it say anything in Mark um, that they were filled with joy? Because in Matthew it talks that they were afraid in Mark. Nice. In Mark, for terror and amazement had seized them. Here in Matthew, they leave with fear. Let's compare some Greek words here. Let me, uh, well... Oh, I know why, because I have to go, I have to do this. Let's see. I have to come up here. 
here. Click on Matthew. And go down here. So, do not be afraid. Go and tell. Um, this is my message for you. So they left too quickly. Fear and great joy. I just want to look up fear. Okay, that's the like phobia, where we get the term phobia, and great joy, um, like grace, karos, um, wonderful. Now let's, um, let's see if we can go over here to Mark, and go down and see those words. No, I think I got to Mark, yep. Uh, let's see, so, um, so they fled with terror, uh, that's, a trem that's a word that means trembling, and amazement, astonishment. So totally different words. Um, totally different words there. I'll get back to Matthew and get back to, to this. So, so right, good catch. Different emotions there between the, the women as they leave. Okay, Randy? Yep. Oh, yeah. You also have the young man in one description and uh, the angel with the total description of the angel in the other one. Yes, so Matthew has the, actually says it, he was an angel, right? Yeah. Now, so here's two differences. Let's see if you can, dis you, you be a biblical scholar here. If Matthew has marked before him when he writes, and other sources, led by the Holy Spirit, we don't want to ever forget that, and he's got marked before him, and notice two differences. What are they? The one Gloria mentioned, the women run away, not with terror and amazement, but with fear and joy. If you're the writer of Matthew, does that make sense? It's like, Mark, what are you talking about? They were excited. They were filled with joy. Because those are editorial comments, right? I mean, you're the author. You get to say what emotion they had. Right? Uh, so, so, but, but it seems to me Matthew's a little uncomfortable with the ending in Mark. Don't you? Um, tell nothing to anyone. And so, so anyway, just a little coloring. And then, in Mark, who's this man in a white robe? He's an angel. <laughs> and Matthew says, he was an angel. Okay? So that's the way sometimes people think about if Mark was first, Matthew... Kind of just clears a little thing up, but you you decide. There might be other good explanations for that. Esley, other differences or similarities or yeah. In, 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 in Mark, the stone is already rolled away when they get there, and in the other one, it's not. Mm. You see it rolled away. Interesting. So in Mark, it's already rolled away. Where is the? Let's get to the stone here. Um. Right here. There we go. So in Matthew, the angel comes and rolls back the stone and sits on it. Do the women observe this? Let's see. They went to see the tomb. You almost wonder, did they get to see this happen in Matthew, don't you? you don't, we don't know for sure. They go to see the tomb, then suddenly, is it on their way, or did, have they gotten there yet? There was a great earthquake, and, and an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. I just love that detail. The sat on it. <laughs> and then, so his appearance was like white. Not, he didn't just have a white robe on. He was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. Um, and the guards, for fear him, the guards shook and became like dead men. Is there any description of the guards over here? No. Uh -huh. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Matthew wants us to know there were guards that were there to make sure that no one stole the box. Very interesting. So there's a detail Matthew adds in his research and his telling of the story and he does so maybe because there's this story going around that his disciples stole the body. And we're going to hear more about those guards. And that's in the movie Risen. That's the gospel that, you know, they're getting some of those details from. Excellent.
Please, Kevin. Yeah, in, I think it's Mark, uh, they've got the commission to spread the word to east and west. Uh, basically establishing the church, if that really means to Rome and Carthage. Or, and the other ones seem to just keep it close and local. Interesting. So in the added ending to Mark, again, granted that perhaps in its original form, there might be some scholars that still hold that for some reason, you know, there was in the initial transmission, the ending got lost or something and it got added back in later. I'm sure some might try and make that case. But regardless, the, in the tradition, the additional ending to Mark has the, the, the words going to go east to west, like all over. This is kind of almost like the Gospel of Luke's start in Jerusalem and go to the end of the age. This makes sense, if, especially if this is a little later edition. But the end of Matthew, you didn't put up there. Yes. It also has a great commission, yeah. which is yeah. the very end of Matthew. Yeah. Whereas this, Mark is, the gospel ends at the resurrection. Yeah. So Mark, this is kind of the great commission right away. In Matthew, you have the appearance of Jesus on the mountain. And in this one, it's the... Uh, it's just kind of, it's almost, it's, almost refer, it's almost like referred to, you know, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people believe that the additional ending of Mark is basically takes Matthew and Luke and kind of does a combo. Some people believe that. I'm excited. You're doing a great job being biblical scholars here. Yes. I'm confident you'll have the answer to this. Oh, but, <coughs> I'm oh, in oh. trouble. What would be the likelihood that they had subsequent dialogue about these events so that when one started to write, like Matthew started to write his, had at least some other insight that, like, hey, Mary, tell me what happened again that morning, and oh, could it have possibly been an angel? I mean, um, so during that period of time, might there have been new clarity that uh, could have occurred? Absolutely, that's possible. And doesn't that happen in your own family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Dave. That's my answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to come back to that. Because at the end, we're going to say, what do we do with these differences? You know, so, no, thank you. Yeah. In Matthew, it says that they don't tell anyone and they land in fear. Yeah, and Mark. Then yes. In Mark, they actually tell people. Yes, so in Matthew, um, they head out, um, with, and they, they go and tell, it makes it clear, they go and tell the disciples. In, in Mark, if we go with this as the ending, which again, most, almost all, your new Bibles probably don't even have the ending, this ending. They might have it in a footnote in small print. Um, so you're absolutely right, Mark, they just run away afraid in the maze, and that's it. He's... He's comfortable ending that way. That, that's a real interesting thing. Correct. Yeah. So is it possible that they added that part to Mark after Matthew had written his? Absolutely. That is what most people would say that this would be an early development within the church and the tradition to, to try and make sense of this really strange ending. You know? It's like... This can't be, you know, yes. Well, back to those emotions. We can have so many emotions going around us at one time, and you can't pinpoint one of them. That's right. That's a comment. But I wanted to ask, how he was crucified in Jerusalem? Yes. How far was it to Galilee, and how long would it take them to get there? Because it said, he will go ahead to you in Galilee. I'll be able to tell you in about a month. <laughs> no, but I actually know an estimate. It's like a day or two. It's a, it's a good, day, a good solid day or two walk. It's a, it's it's not a. I think it's a couple day walk actually. It's like 70, 90 miles. So you'd have to you'd have to be traveling if you were on a if you had some transportation. But so that's probably 70, 90. I did a 50 miler in five days. So maybe it's more like it's. It isn't, it's not just that, let's just go next door to Galilee. It's a good trek. So good question. Good question. Um, where did we go? Other, other similarities between Matthew and Mark? Let's, let's get Luke on board. Okay? Let's go. Did I miss one? 
Okay? Let's look at Luke. Luke is really interesting. On the first day of the week, at early dawn. Now that is interesting that the tradition has, all the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, have it the first day of the week at early dawn. They all have that in common. All right, but I'm not going to help you anymore. Okay. They came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Or actually, not a question mark. Remember, he told you, third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returned from the tomb. They told all this to the, <coughs> to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, jo, jo, Johanna, jo, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the disciples. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. That's the empty. That's not the end of the gospel. We get resurrection appearances, but that's the empty tomb portion. What's different? What's similar? Uh, Ray, go ahead, raise it, raise it up. You, uh, we got Don and right in front of you. Yep, go ahead. Yep. Two men, not one. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sue. Well, in between the Matthew one and this one, and even in Mark, in the Matthew one, the angel is sitting outside on the stone. Yes. But in this, in this one, there are two guys inside. Yes. And in in Mark as well. Yes. One. one guy, yeah, one in Mark. But here they're inside the tomb, right? Yes, right. And on the outside and in Matthew, there was an angel sitting on the rock. Yes. Hmm. Okay, uh, uh, right here and then we'll go over to Kim and then here. Yeah. Uh, in this one there's no fear, just amazement. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Mm. They were so they went. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. So Peter is amazed, and we don't necessarily get a narrative about the women in Luke as far as what they felt. Well, but it does say there was fright. There was. They were. They were afraid when they first got there. Okay, Kim, and then Don. Yeah. In Matthew and Mark, he was risen just as he said, and in this one, he expounds on that. Okay, so in Luke, it's like, get out your Bibles. Don't you remember? Jesus said, he be, you know, not just, the other angels just say just as he said. Luke says that they gave a little more information. Now it's interesting, if you go to the front part of the Gospel of Luke, um, it starts out with, inasmuch as many have endeavored to record these things, it seemed good to me, and the Holy Spirit, to do that also, you get the sense that Luke wasn't an eyewitness of Jesus, but he was connected intimately to those who were, and he went around and interviewed people. So this goes back to Dave, your, your comment earlier, that maybe Luke went and talked to the women, and said, and they said, well, this is exactly what he said. So Luke gives us a little more on that, Kim, does it? Does it? Yeah, a little bit more. Yes, Don. It just reminds me how little things change. In this one, there's a whole group of women more than just one or two or three. Yes. And he mentions three, but uh, and Peter's mentioned again, but he doesn't believe a word they say and yes. has to go see it himself. Yeah. 
And what are what's your point? Yeah. <laughs> my point is my wife reminds me she's always right. <laughs> Moral of the story, listen. Listen. <laughs> hey, I know that is really it's fun. I think that's it, I think it's interesting that Luke wants us to know Peter, they didn't just receive not just Peter, it seemed to all of them an idle tale. Now that's a detail that we don't get, at, at least yet. Um, I don't think we get that in Matthew and Mark. We don't get a narrative that, you know, they didn't believe and they didn't receive it, which actually makes more sense to me. Would you believe it? I, I would be like, what? I would want to go and see for myself like Peter did. So I, that's a detail that really, makes, that really makes a lot of sense. But yes, you brought up another one. This is a little peek behind the, the, the lines, and this is where if I did my own Jesus movie, where I was the director or the writer, you know how they always have the 12 disciples marching around after him? Totally wrong. you got to have the 12 disciples and a whole bunch of other people and a bunch of women. Because they were his disciples. They were his followers. They weren't amongst the twelve, supposedly. But they were followers of his. That's what Luke says. And the other women with them who told them this to the apostles. There were lots of women who followed Jesus. And to follow meant that you were in the school of that rabbi. That's, you, that's the way you went to class. So, and what did, when Mary sat at Jesus' feet, did Jesus say, no, you can't, women can't, I can't be a student. In fact, he scolded Martha when Martha said, hey, tell her to stop that. Hmm? So, so that's, that's a detail that we miss. And so, yes, here we had a couple women, three women, now these three, but actually there's, um, other women. there's other, and then now these other women, but in Mark up here there's a, um, Salome, right? And then over here we got Joanna. So, or somewhere in there we got. So we've got a little bit of discrepancy on which women. But bottom line, the women went to the tomb, and they, yes, yeah. I was going to say, disparaging remark. When a bunch of women are talking and making points, you forget who it is that says what. I, second, I disagree with that. But it's <laughs> And this is Luke. Yes. Right. The women tell the apostles, and the other two they tell the disciples. Ah, interesting. I totally missed that. Apostles, which um, if I pulled it up, it means sent out one. And it, and in Luke, boy, that makes perfect sense that they're already described as apostles, because Luke, you know, the second volume of Luke and Acts. It's the story of the Acts of the Apostles. It's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, so these folks are the Apostles that sent out ones. Great catch. Good, good, Doc. Yep. But in the, if in the early times, the words getting, or rumors getting around that maybe the body was taken by the Apostles, this story is starting to show that they didn't know about it either. Yes. Good, good. Because if, you know, if they would have just like believed it, oh yes, he's raised. But the fact they don't believe it kind of discredits that in a different they way. They weren't part of the plot. Right. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. I love that. So Matthew comes at that possibility that the disciples did this by talking about the guards and then he actually even explicitly says that there was this conspiracy theory that was concocted um, to explain what happened. Matthew c confronts it that way. Luke confronts it by just talking about how they didn't believe and they didn't receive it, which is most likely absolutely true. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering about Mary, the mother of James. Is that Jesus' mother? Because I've seen in Scripture where James was his brother. Cool. Thanks for asking a question I have no idea about. <laughs> it would be that's a great question Joan um, James was Jesus' brother but you it's interesting you might, you might wonder why why didn't why didn't 
it, he say, you know, Mary, Jesus' mother, the Lord's mother or something? Yeah. And it's interesting. Maybe this is where the Catholic Church says that they try and say that um, that James was a brother, like a stepbrother, or, or anyway, there was a, you know, so I don't, I'm not an expert on that part of it. Um, please. Yeah. So when I, when I listen to uh, those three, yeah. in the first two, in Mark and Matthew, the women notice the angel or the man in white right away. Yeah. But in Luke, they're in the tomb, they're looking around, they find the stuff, he's not there, they turn like they're going to believe, and wow, all of a sudden there's two guys. Yeah. It's like two angels came in after they were while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. Yeah, nice. Nice, Kat. Interesting. Yes? I, I've got a comment about Mary, the mother of James. Please. As, as a witness, if you were an attorney introducing her as a witness, you would want to establish her not as Jesus' mother because she... She would, be she'd be subjective or something. Yeah. Yes, but as the mother of James. Nice. Good, good. Please, Ron. Just, yeah. just yeah. an observation, probably in my modern culture <laughs> observation. Oh, good. Compared to that, is that why is it that the woman's experience has to be legitimized by telling the guys? <laughs> that was the culture. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a great question. <laughs> Let's just give him a stand. No. <laughs> you know, in that day, there's no question that um, that the confirmation from the guys would have been really probably important. Yeah. Cultural difference. Yeah, absolute cultural difference. Um, the disciples, the twelve, did have a special place. But I, that's a great, that's a great, great thought. Uh, right, uh, microphone right back to Dave back there, and then, then we'll start to, we'll make a couple more comments, and then we'll shift to John. I think we can get John. Weren't the disciples at that time afraid? They were kind of off, secluded, because of the fear of the aftermath, you know, the rumors of the soldiers or whatever, and so we're less likely to be visible. Yes. Or from Right, so that would explain, well, why wouldn't the disciples go to the, to the, to the cave, to the grave? Um, I wonder if a woman could have gotten also in trouble, though. But that's a good question. But, yeah, I think you're right um, that they would have been in a much more difficult position to go there and be seen. Because, like, are they going to do this to all of us? The same thing. Uh, that's a great point, Dave. Yeah, right here with Kim. Yep. Did they get to the um, disciples in Matthew to disbelieve? Do they, do, does it say that the disciples disbelieved? Yeah, I don't think they got to the disciples in Matthew. They just said they were going to go. So they, they ran to tell his disciples. Let's see what's down here. <laughs> but after, uh, oh no, that's not, that. So then Jesus meets them. So we actually didn't get all of Matthew. Then Jesus meets them, do not be afraid, go and tell my brothers to go to Gal. Oh no, that we've already read that. Yeah. So the next thing, Jesus appears to the women on the way, greetings. I hate that translation. It actually is grace uh, or peace or grace to you. Um, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and then he said, Do not be afraid. Tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Um, so we're into the Appearances now, um, yeah, yeah. So that's a, uh, just a parallel. And then now we get to the report of the guard in Matthew. Let me just keep going here. No, we're going to John. Just a second. Yeah. And then um, so the Emmaus story. Sorry, I'm studying the Bible. I'm getting lost. Be patient. Just be patient. Kim has a question. So I gotta find it. Yeah, okay. I think, I don't know that we hear that they, what happened when they told in Matthew. Yeah, I think that's a great, that's a great observation as well. Okay, any more on this and then we'll go to John. 
Go ahead, Barb. I was just going to say that maybe it was less suspicious for the women to be going to the tomb. They wouldn't suspect them of robbing the tomb because it was the women's job to anoint the bodies. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, too? Okay, I love that comment. Um, It's so interesting with Mark and Matthew on this, because Matthew leaves the whole anointing of the body completely out, just as they went to see the tomb. Why? Because in Matthew, it's almost like he doesn't want to give anybody any even inkling that they even planned to open that, that tomb. It was shut, it was sealed, it was a done deal. Remember the movie Risen? How they had, you know, it all roped up and, and put the seal on it. You know, because the concern is that someone's going to come and steal the body. So, you know, the, the inference from the Gospel of Matthew is that they already knew that this was, that, that people were thinking this, that the disciples might come. And so ahead of time, in Matthew, ahead of time, they sealed the tomb. I think that's, in fact, if we go back in Matthew, it says, it talks about they sealed the tomb. So, but in Mark, you wouldn't seal the tomb if gals were going to come and go in and anoint. See, so Matthew just leaves that out. It's interesting that he leaves that out. Please, Bill. Two, two quick text notes. In the, yeah. And I need study by Good. One on uh, in Luke where it's talking about uh, Mary. Uh, it said uh, Mary, the mother of James. She is the other Mary of Matthew. The absence of the mother of Jesus is significant. She was probably with John. When you go back and look at the text note in uh, in Matthew, it's kind of strange. It says, The other Mary, the wife of Cleopas and sister of the mother of Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Were there two Marys in the same? Yeah. So there's some questions about the, the gals. Let's go to John because we won't make it if we don't. And I want to have you at the end here, so we got we got five minutes to do John, and then we've got to ask, well, what, why are all these differences, and how do they affect your faith, okay? Or do they? Early on, the first day of the week, while it was still dark, so that's exactly the same. All four say they went first day of the week, still dark, or right at daybreak. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she's by herself. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. Most people believe that that's a, a, a note of the writer of the Gospel of John. But And said to them, it's called the beloved disciple. And they, and they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. Now notice. We. In the manuscript tradition, some manuscripts have I, because it just says that she went by herself. But this is the best attested that it's we. So this would make sense, even though John says Mary Magdalene went, but the inference is what? That others went with her. Okay? Um, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. So now Mary sees, we've got to go tell the folks, tells Peter, the other disciple, they run to the tomb. Um, the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I just love that. <laughs> it's like, I'm writing this gospel for Jesus, but I do want everybody to know I'm faster than Peter. <laughs> Jesus' head. Um, 
not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. That's an interesting detail, isn't it? It's like when Jesus was raised, he was neat about it. You know? <laughs> kind of. um, then the other disciple, then the other disciple who reached the tomb first, uh, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. There's a lot of debate about what scripture. Uh, there are Old Testament, you think about Jonah, there's others, there's Psalms that talk about, you know, kind of, that have reference to resurrection. Um, it could, I think that's most likely what it would be. Some have even thought that uh, Jesus, by the time John writes, that Jesus' words have become scripture. But I think that's probably a stretch. But nonetheless, so John said, John's, if, if John is the beloved disciple, that... Um, this one that went with him believed, but the others hadn't quite figured it out yet. I think that's the way I read that. Um, but there is some difficulty in it. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, oh, wait a minute. So they go back. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb as she wept. Um, she bent over to look in the tomb. So now Mary looks in. And now this is where we get close to Luke again. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. Just like you observe, Brett, in Luke, they go in the tomb, then all of a sudden they appear. So Mary now comes back and looks in, and now she sees two. Um, one at the right, one at the head, and the other at the foot or at the feet. Uh, Bob Smith, in his commentary, just wonders if this isn't a... you remember what the Ark of the Covenant looks like? What do you got on each side? The actual description is a seraphim on the foot and at the head. And so, some, some people think, is this kind of a way to help us see that now there's a new Ark of the Covenant in the resurrection of Jesus? It's interesting. They said to her... He said, and then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Um, and then um, Mary Magdalene went out and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Um, well, wait a minute. We skip a spot there. Um, I'm sorry. I, it, it sometimes it just it's putting things together, and it, that wasn't in chronological order. So, but this is the end of that, and then after this, we have that in the garden song. He walks with me, and he talks. That's a story about Jesus' meeting with Mary Magdalene. If you didn't know that, you have to hear it as Mary singing about encountering Jesus. I know a lot of people love that song, some people don't garden. like it. In the garden, yeah. Um, so, so it's here that she sees Jesus, she doesn't know who he is. So that's an appearance of Jesus. We can't talk about that today because that's not our subject. So anyway, what do you notice that's interesting, different about John? Um, obviously a lot of things, right? Um, since we're running out of time, but you can help me if I miss any. Um, real quick on the disciples. Peter went, looked in, empty tomb, wow, leave. Then Mary comes in, and so Mary sees the angels, Peter does not. The rest of the disciples don't believe yet, except for maybe the beloved disciple. And then, um, then Mary goes in and has this encounter with the two angels, who tell her the similar thing that they told the, the man or the angel or the angels, in the other Gospels told, go and tell the disciples. So that's very similar to all four, but then a unique, uh, a unique difference. So, um, what do we do with all of this? Does this challenge you? Does this make you think, well, wow, is, is this real? We've got a time issue, so I don't fall down. What do you think? Somebody, somebody share with me your, be honest. Maybe you're like in a crisis right now. I don't know. Please. You, you know the famous works of fiction where an author will tell a single story from the viewpoint of three or four different people. 
and there's there are narratives that tell the same story. Yes. But they, we, as witnesses, we see things differently. Uh huh. Do we have any of our police officers in here today? Yeah. It's well known that. Come, come on, here, here, hold on, hold on. HR, it's great. It's well known that in any scene, accident, whatever you want, you have multiple witnesses. If you get the same story from everybody, it's confabulated. <laughs> witnesses always had slightly different interpretations of what they saw and what happened. Bingo. Bingo. Please. Is there any relevance to, uh, I think it was Mark, where it said Angel was on the right? Yeah, I don't know. About, I'd have to research to see if some people wonder about that. But I, I don't know. It's an interesting detail, isn't it? And this is something that happens a lot. with this. If you go with Mark as the original, the other writers leave out some of those details that they're scratching their head to. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Please. Well, I'd have to go back and read it with this context that if Matthew wrote for the Jews and Mark wrote for the Christians in Rome, Luke was kind of a historian. I mean, it's yes. to read it again with those perspectives. So it could be that the differences <coughs> come from what their particular concerns are. I think that's absolutely true that Matthew writes because he's combating the Jewish thing that his body was stolen. That may, He's very clear about it. The others work with that, but there, the others aren't as concerned with that. Mark certainly. Excellent. Um, did I see the mic going to somebody back here? No? Right here. Please, Gloria, and then I'll... Do some part well, I don't think the other the other gospels mention the um, wrappings and the headpiece folded up. And yes. If his body was stolen quickly, they probably wouldn't have left it all. Right. How do you explain <laughs> that? Right. And of course, this is where some people go back with the crowd and, and all of that. But excellent, excellent point. So we've got to kind of sew this up today. I want to go back to what HR said. Um, Many people today will try and challenge your faith and say, look at how different the Gospels are when it comes to just the empty tomb. They can't even agree on that. It must not be true. It must be fabricated. And the truth is that if they were exactly the same, just as HR said, that would show that they were fabricated. The fact that they are different says what? Something really happened. Women went to the tomb. Angel appeared. You know, so that the details are a little different, that just makes it all the more beautiful. Like Barb said, each, each person kind of tells from their own perspective. And that's what I think we have a beautiful telling of the resurrection. And I think that's why I, I certainly believe that the empty tomb kind of part of the tradition is, is just as rooted in history as the rest of the Gospels tellings of the story of Jesus. So, but I think, I think it's fascinating and interesting, and I hope this was helpful And when you get to Easter this uh, Sunday and uh, celebrate the good news. And we'll see what PJ has to say about the women running away terror and, with terror and amazement and saying nothing to anyone. Thank goodness they did, right? Eventually. Christ is risen. Yes. Hallelujah. Have a blessed holy week.